is up guys, this is your boy Kurt, coach of the Emerald and Nemerus, bringing you week 2 against Golden Guy. Uh, this week we've got a Specs Raikou, which is a really, really good set in him. His only ground type is a Toad Squirrel. I'm not worried about Toad Squirrel at all because of my roster. We also have a Covert Cloak Defensive Hariyama to check the Sneeze Now this is a really cool set because he never two-hit KOs me with Diaclaw unless he's Swords Dance, and if he tries to Swords Dance in my face, my Earthquake will always kill a no-bulk Sneasler, guaranteed. Uh, and then we just have like a bulky DD, uh, Gaijin Fire, sorry, my name slipped my mind. Uh, but we have Bol Burning Bulwark on it so that we can try and mind games the Sneasler and the Semirot, as well as just try and scout for like Sucker Punch, Dragapult, and things like that. We just have a Boots, Stealth Rocking, Iron Treads, a pretty standard Iron Treads here. We have Boots on Mandibuzz as well, because I was really scared of him bringing a really good Rock of into me, and I just kind of don't want to be punished for making all of my switches. And then we just have like a Spadef Slowking, which is just kind of here to help sponge hits and click buttons as well as give me momentum into things like gouging fire into my Raikou again to just click Volt Switch as we see that his only answer to it is now the Kilowatt Troll and I am packing Scold and Shadow Ball so I can click those two moves pretty freely against this team. I don't fear anything that they want to do. So we're gonna get into the battle here and see what he is going to lead as I am just going to lead off with my Raikou. Because this is super free, I can just click Volt Switch for free, I can just click anything I want for free. I can just Scold. So I'm gonna Scold to try and burn this thing. Uh, it's also catching the Killer Watchful coming in. So I'm not taking any risks there on Killer Watchful coming in for free. As much as I wanted to just click Raw Volt Switch turn 1, knowing he wouldn't go into Kilowattral. But it just wasn't worth the risk of him going into Kilowattral on a potential Volt Switch. So I'm going to click the Scald and potentially try and burn the Semirot if he decides to stay in. But also maybe get a burn on like Dragapult or Cliff or something to get a uh, passive chip if he's uh, unaware of Cliff. As he is, he is going to go into the Cliff. So this is really nice for me. I get a lot of damage off on this cliff. That is a huge chunk of damage. And I'm just gonna pivot out into my Iron Treads, as I see no reason not to just go Iron Treads. I always chew a Flamethrower. I always chew anyone hit this thing wants to go for. So Iron Treads is honestly my safest play here, as I'm gonna see what he wants to go for with this Clefable. So we'll see. If he wants to click a move or if he's just gonna switch again because he could very well just double out to try and bait me in to a Pokemon he wants me to have in on the screen. So we are just gonna hard switch because I am choice specs, I can't click Volt Switch unfortunately. And we're gonna go into just average the Iron Treads. As he is gonna just double with the Clef. Uh, so he gets to play right there and gets back in his, his Sabine Semirot. This thing is an absolute threat and I don't want to be here against this. So I'm just going to click Volt Switch. I could have very easily clicked, clicked my Stealth Rocks here because he's surely not going to click a water move. There's no way he clicks an offensive water move here. He has to go for Ceaseless. So I could have got Rocks up to try and punish the Killer Watchful coming in. But we're going to Volt Switch, and we are going to indeed go out into... I can go many Buzz, I can also go into the uh, Hariyama, but I am going to go Mandibuzz. Mandibuzz is super safe for me to go into, as he's just going to flip turn. So it's going to do a little bit of damage, reveal that he is not banded, which was a threat to my team. Unironically, that thing did a lot of damage if he was banded here. So... I'm now in with Mandy, and if he goes kill a Wattrol, I think my play is to always go into Treads. But I want to make a pretty risky play if I do see the kill a Wattrol. Uh, I've 
in this time that he's taking, I'm thinking about if he goes kill a Wattrol, can I take the hit? I'm calking. I'm looking to see what I can do. Because I didn't really bring a good check to Terra kill a Wattrol uh, when I was looking back at it in prep. So I could just go hard into the Iron Treads. I could just go into my Raikou. But I'm scared that he might be Terra Ground. So I kind of want to scout for that to see if he's going to predict me to do that. And I just want to click U-Turn. Because he's never going to click an electric move while I have Iron Tread still there safely in the back. But he does get the flinch on the Air Slash, so I do lose my momentum that I was aiming to get. So we're just going to go hard into the Iron Treads this time. I'm not risking him clicking electric moves since I stayed in last turn. And then this will also bait out anything he wants to go for. I know my Slow King can take one, and if he is Terra Ground, I can just click Skull. If he's not Terra Ground, then Iron Treads lives and just clicks Earthquake on it. So he does go for the Thunderbolt, doesn't kill my Iron Treads, obviously, as I am immune. And I'm just going to try and get my rocks up. Uh, I have no other play to make other than try and get rocks up. Hope that I can live this hit. He's also revealed that he is not choice on the Killer Watch Roll, so that's nice. We know that he isn't like a spec Killer Watch Roll, and it means that my Slow King actually does indeed take one. So he is going to Terra Ground here, which is unfortunate was hoping that he wouldn't be Terra Ground, but it's a very good bring into my team. I don't have a whole lot that wants to see in on this that can resist ground, electric, and flying. So he is just going to click Terra Blast, and he is just going to absolutely, so long, absolutely destroy Iron Treads. There was, there was no chance I was ever living that hit. So I'm just going to go out into my Slow King. Um, because I see no reason not to. I can also just go into Hariyama. So I go into Hariyama, I thought about going Slow King because I can take the Volt Switch. But we are just going to click the Fake Out because we do have Fake Out on this thing. So this gives me a lot of momentum. Again, this breaks the potential Sash because he could be Sash Kilowattral as to why he wanted to get rid of my rocks, uh, my rocker so quickly. He could also just be Boots and not care, but I wasn't sure because he was Terra Ground. So I wanted to break the Sash, get the Fake Out off, and then I'm just going to go into Slow King because he has to Vol Switch here. He never kills me in one, and he does die to a close combat. And I feel like he needs this Killer Watch Roll for late game because I do have the Gouging Fire that does just kind of destroy him if I can get a Dragon Dance off in the right situation. So he is just going to go for the Vault Switch and do a decent chunk of damage. It reveals to me that he is a timid killer waffle though, so I'm not too upset about that. That sort of gives me a lot of information. Information that I really, really needed. So, we're going to see what he wants to go into. Slow King can beat pretty much anything that isn't this Pokemon. This Pokemon is like the one thing I didn't want him to go into. But now I can just go back into my Hariyama because realistically Hariyama just kind of sits on his entire team. And I lose nothing by just going into Hariyama. We are EV to beat this and Sneasla, so this is where Hariyama is going to do a lot of damage. This is going to be really nice for me. As he's going to click the Sneasla and do like no damage, Hariyama is so, so thick. I love this Pokemon. Um, I am just actually going to opt to go for the Heavy Slam here. This is a bit of a ballsy play in case he wants to stay in, but I feel like he always goes Clef on my obvious uh, fighting move, or he goes Dragapult. So my, on my fake out, so my middle ground play is to always go for Heavy Slam. Uh, I'm not scared of this Pokemon as he does go for the flip turn. So he is going to take this Samurott back out, and this is why I didn't click a fighting move. There was no point in me ever clicking it. And we are going to be able to catch the Clefable on the switch in with the Heavy Slam. So this is going to be a really, really nice kill for Hariyama. This is a big threat out of the way. Riveting! Hariyama just absolutely... Destroys that Clefable. I think I did like min 100% on the calcs. Like, that thing was just eviscerated off the face of the earth. So, we're gonna see what he wants to go into. Uh, I'm really scared of him going Dragapult here. I'm not ready for Dragapult to come in yet. I don't have the chip on other Pokemon that I need to be able to beat it. Uh, to beat other Pokemon, sorry. And I don't beat it in one hit. Unless my Gadget Fire can get the Dragon Dance off. Which means that he also can't click Dragon Pulse. So that really sucks if he decides to go into the Dragapult. 
So while I'm sort of just sitting here, I am looking at what potential plays I can make depending on the Pokemon he goes into. If he goes Dragapult, then I always have to go Mandibuzz to scout the damage, see what kind of set he is. Sort of work out where I want to go from there. And if he goes into the Kilowatt roll, I'm kind of forced into just sacking this Harry Armor now. I, I don't really have a choice. I don't want to be taking chip on everything I don't need to be. And I can kind of lose if he just goes into the Kilowatt roll. So I'm going to quick Drain Punch on the Kamala. I always live a banded body slam from this Pokemon, so that's really nice. And he can never parry me because I'm Covert Cloak. So that helps. This will get me a decent chug HP back. It's not going to get me back to where I was. But it'll get me a good okay. way back up. Now you die. So Harry Armor just going to punch this Koala in the face. Absolutely send it to the next dimension. And so Hariyama picks up two kills in a row, Hariyama being absolutely goated this week. I'm so glad I picked up this Pokemon, it's such a fat Pokemon that just sits, gets kills, and then kind of does its own thing wherever it wants to be. So he's going to bring out the Dragapult here, and this is exactly sort of what I wanted to be. I didn't want to see Kilowattrol, I lose the moment he goes into Kilowattrol at the moment. So I'm just going to go out into my Mandibuzz here every single time. I did think about going into other Pokemon, but Mandibuzz is always the play. I need to scout this thing's damage to see if he's physical, because I chew any physical hit. Oh, well, mixed. So if he's mixed, then that means he's not specs. Which means that my Slowking is just infinitely better in the endgame. As well as my Gouge and Fire, because I don't have to worry about specs, Shadow Ball, or Drake. Uh, Dragon Pulse, which he has revealed. Ah, oh, which he hasn't revealed, sorry. And he's sort of clicked to no moves. I have no information about this, so just thinking about it, I'm gonna go into Mandibuzz. I always go Mandibuzz on this thing to try and... Try and scout the damage. This, this Dragapult is absolutely terrifying. He does reveal the Dragapult, and he does reveal that he is specced with that damage. He should have never done more than about 30% with, without specs, so that tells me everything I need to know about this set. And I can safely let Mandibuzz go down. It's sort of done its job now. It's given me a lot of information in this game. It's told me what sort of Semarok he is. It revealed that he was Air Slash of a Hurricane on the Kilowattrol, which is good for me because it means that he does less to my Gouge of Fire if he does Terror, but he did Terror, obviously. Next to Iron Tread. So we're just even going to Sloking here, and I'm going to make an aggressive play predicting him to switch, even though he could very well just click Spec Dragon Pulse and do a lot of damage. I feel like he's not going to, so I'm just going to click the Scold. I did think about Ice Beaming to catch the Kilowatt Troll, but there was really no point as Skull punished him ever going into the Pursuing Semarok or the Sneasler. Both of them didn't want to catch a Skull, and if he went into them, it punished him for making that play. So, we are just going to click the Skull. Skull is a super safe click here, it also just gets chip on this, potential burn damage on this Pokemon as well. So he is going to switch the Dragapult, as we do get the Scold off onto the Sneasler, because that's the last Pokemon he hasn't revealed on his team yet. So this is huge, we get a lot of damage on this, and we do get the burn, so that's absolutely massive. He does get punished for going into the Sneasler on my Slowking. I was about two seconds away from clicking Psychic, because I was like, he's never going to go into the Hisuian Samurott, but that would have been an insanely aggressive play that I don't know if it would have worked in my favor. But it was definitely worth a shot. Um, definitely glad that we got the Skull up, get the burn, the Sneasel is doing no damage with U-turn, so that's really nice. And we're just going to get a Chili Reception off. I'm going to get the momentum now. This is going to put me back into the swing of the momentum. As he is just going to go into the Sweet Samurai, and I have no reason not to just go into the Raikou. And I felt like he should never stay in with this. He kind of needs his Pokemon to beat my Sloking if he locks the wrong move with Dragapult. So that was kind of what I was hoping for here, is that he went um, 
is that he switches here when I go Raikou. I did think about going into the Hariyama, but there was literally no point going into Ryama. As cool as it would have been to get more Yama kills, it just wasn't worth it. I also needed to lure him into a specific situation now because I didn't know how I was going to beat the Dragapult Killer Watchful. Um, I had to get a scenario where I can get a Dragon Dance off with my Gouge and Fire, and the only way is if I'm in in front of this Pokemon, or I'm in in front of Dragapult locked in the Shadow Ball. So I kind of had to force that situation as best I could. Once I was sort of running out of Pokemon, I was getting chipped. So I did think about clicking Shadow Ball here, but I think Gold to try and catch the Killer Waffle was my better play. Which sucked because if I just clicked Vault Switch, I got another kill here. Because he is going to stay in and just click the Sucker Punch, as I am just going to fire off the Skull. We are unfortunately not going to get the burn on this Pokemon, but that's fine. I almost pivoted here into my uh, Slow King. I bumped the Run button as I try to get back to look at my Pokemon. I almost pivoted into this Hariyama, but again, I didn't want it clicking Dragon Pulse because then that puts me in a really, really awkward situation. So, I'm kind of just stuck just firing up another Skull if he wants to flip turn. If he wants to suck a punch and kill me, that's good for me because I can go into Gouging Fire and I can just click Dragon Dance for free on this Pokemon. I'm not scared of it in any way, shape, or form. I also have Burning Pole Walk to try and burn it and punish it. So, he is going to stay in again, not get burned, and he is just going to flip turn out. So, he's going to be... Uh, take his Semarot back, and he is just going to be able to bring back out Dragapult, which is an absolute threat to my team. But if he locks into Dragon Pulse, then he does not break my Slowking, and I can always just pivot it out, sack a Pokemon, and bring it back in after doing some damage. So he's forced into Shadow Ball the moment I go into Slowking here, which puts me in the perfect situation to bring in my Gouging Fire after. It also means that I can sack my Hariyama to get the Gouging Fire in. And I'm going to lose diff for that, but I am not playing for diff here. I am playing to, I'm just playing to win. That is my entire goal here is I'm playing to win. So I am just going to click the ice beam. I lose nothing by clicking ice beam now. Semarot always dies on switch in. Killer Watchful doesn't want to come in on this. And he also doesn't want this Dragapult to take the ice beam. He does just click the shadow ball here and does a lot of damage. So that does reveal that he is spec shadow ball. So that's really nice to me, that puts me in a perfect situation, as we do get the crit on this thing. I'm not sure if that crit mattered. I thought about just staying in and sacking the Slow King, but there was really no point in me sacking Slow King for no reason. When I have a Hariyama that's really not doing anything in the back. Uh, Hariyama can't do much other than take a hit from the Semarot, but in this situation, I'm always, always going to go into the Gadget Fire after a I sack a Pokemon here, so I felt like there was no need for me to needlessly sack Slowking when I could still use it to try and beat the Killer Watch Roll. Uh, if I get damaged but don't kill the Killer Watch Roll, I should kill it because I should be able to get a free DD. So we are going to get hurt by Spikes and he's just going to fire off another Shadow Ball. So this puts me in the perfect situation to bring in my Gouging Fire. And Gouging Fire is just going to start clicking buttons as Gouging Fire does. Snow finally snops, stops from the chilly reception, but it wasn't really boosting any of our Pokemon. It was purely for momentum. So, I'm about to end this man's whole career. We're getting the Gouging Fire, and I'm just going to click Dragon Dance. I always live Shadow Ball because I know he's Specs. I know he's locked in and if he wants to switch it gives me the free turn to DD so I'm just gonna DD and this thing's face and we are gonna call it good because as soon as I get that dragon dance off this game is pretty much over there's nothing he can really do to stop my gadget fire from just clicking buttons so he's just gonna fire off the shadow ball and I am just gonna reveal the dragon dance it was at this moment he knew. He fucked up. So we're gonna get the Dragon Dance off, and that's pretty much gonna be game. So thankfully we managed to bring that back. Golden Guy played really, really well. He put me in a corner very early on in the game, killing my Iron Treads before I could get my rocks up, killing my 
Mandibuzz because he was Specs, and if I hadn't have switched, then maybe I would have had my Mandibuzz to try and play around with removing moves, but I am just going to click the Heat Crash. This always kills. I needed just a little... I only needed about 30% chip on this thing for my Earthquake to kill anyway. But that crit from Floking just kind of made, made it guaranteed that I always killed anything he wanted to click. So with that, Gadget Fire is going to be able to sweep up the end of this game. Gadget Fire is an absolute menace. He is so, so bulky for no reason. And being able to take that Specs Shadow Ball as well as I did was absolutely insane. I did not expect to take less than half from a Choice Specs Stab Dragon Pult Shadow Ball. That's just ridiculous. This Pokemon has so much bulk. Thankfully it's not any faster or it would be a real, real threat. I'm very glad that he just went for the... They didn't give it like base 100 and something speed. 91 speed is a very nice speed tier. He is going to bring in the killer watch roll here now. And I'm just going to fire off yet another heat crash. There is no point. No point me ever not clicking heat crash here. So we click the heat crash. And we just nuke this killer watch roll off the face of the earth. And then it's just Semarot left. And I'm just going to click Burning Bulwark because I'm scared of Black Blasters. Sucker Punch. Just doing way too much damage. Unironically, it's still a threat even though it's the last Pokemon. It's practically dead. It is still a threatening Pokemon. Never ever sleep on the... On the Semarot as I am... He does bring in the Sneasel. This is irrelevant, this Pokemon. Uh, <laughs> I was not worried about this Pokemon at all. That burn early game just made it so that Sneasel wasn't a threat at all. So we get the EQ off, kill the Sneasler, and Gadget Fire is going to pick up three kills before the Samurai comes in, and we are going to get four kills with Gadget Fire. Putting Gadget Fire onto the board finally after I played him horribly in week one. I definitely could have played my Gadget Fire a lot better. Got him in a lot earlier to Dragon Dance and just kind of go a little bit ham. So we're just going to click the Burning Ball Walk on this. I don't want to get Sucker Punched. So we do just click the Burning Ball Walk. Such a cool move animation. <laughs> no. He does just go for the Sucker Punch. And we do just not have to worry about that. So with that, Gaudium Fire is now just going to be able to click any move it wants to click. And we are just going to win the game. So GG's to Golden Guy, that was a really good game, he had me in the corner for a lot of the game. I made a few plays that were probably a bit riskier than I needed to, like the heavy slam from the Hariyama, but I'm kind of glad I made them, they kind of put me into that end game position. So again, GG's to Golden Guy and I will see you guys in week 3 when we take on Metagross Maxis and his New York Metas. Peace out guys.